Okay, so now that you've broken down your project into the subcomponents, we're going to talk a little bit more about the design of the individual components. So in this phase where you're designing an individual subcomponent, you're really looking to create those outputs like a diagram, a drawing, a schematic, something that shows exactly what is going to be produced. So if you're doing a mechanical item, you should have both a CAD model and a print that shows all the dimensions so you can understand exactly how each of those pieces is built. Um, so you need to get into detail at this phase. This isn't an overall idea or making something out of clay. This is where you need to get into serious detail. Uh, you should also include on those how the components are going to work together. So if you're doing a print of an individual subcomponent, you should have an assembly print showing how each of those things interfaces. Um, this should also include um, some annotation of what all of the purchase components were. Hopefully you'll have a bill of materials for your whole project, but a sub-assembly should have a bill of materials as well. So you can say, here are exactly the things we purchased, not just roughly, but exactly, um, so that someone else could buy the exact same thing to assemble and create the same project. And then if you're doing some manufacturing, you want to indicate what exactly were the steps that we did. We used uh, a router, we used a mill, and exactly what the programs were. So give reference to all of those things. And doing this kind of design will require knowledge that you've learned in your classes, but it will also require you to go out and learn new skills. So you'll very often be forced to make things you've never made before or never been taught how to make. And going out and learning those things is part of your experience of becoming an effective designer. Okay, continuing on our example from the Camp Riley sailboat project, here's a good example of a design output for one of those individual subcomponents. So here they're looking just at the voltage regulators. So you can see they have indicated exactly what components are used and what the connections are between each component. So you have a very good idea how to recreate this if someone uh, asked you to do so. So this is a good design output. Some of the things you may notice, like it says nine volt regulator and you don't know exactly what that is. You can make up for that through a bill of materials like this and it's a little bit small to see but they've indicated what exactly which servo motor are we talking about when we say servo motor? Exactly what regulator are we talking about when we say nine volt regulator? So they give specific part numbers, where it was purchased from, what it cost. So you can really understand how to go about recreating this design. This is a really great way to do design from the bottom up. So to recap on the design of individual subcomponents, you really need to go into immense detail on the design of these components so that every facet of that component is fully defined. Whether that's a mechanical system, electrical system, or software, you should have every detail outlined in this. Um, and you really need to do that to ensure correct manufacturing and eventual assembly of your project. So as you're doing a subcomponent, it doesn't exist on its own. You need it to work well with the other components. The design of each component should be complete and um, oftentimes you're going to have to learn to do something new along this process. So be prepared to go out and be a lifetime learner. Find out new information on your own. Seek out help in doing design of things you don't know how to do already. So you really have to be resourceful at this part in the project. So it's your turn. Uh, at this time, reflect on a time you found yourself over your head on a problem where you didn't think you had the technical knowledge to solve it. Think about how you worked through that. So oftentimes this part of a project is when people get really discouraged or feel like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do this. This is too hard. Because this is when you have to stop doing blue sky thinking and start really digging into the details. But I assure you, even professional designers go through those same hassles and headaches as they go to do design. But as you've done these types of projects a few times, you're not afraid of that feeling of uncertainty anymore. You know that you're able to go out and find the information you need develop the skills you need and be creative to solve those problems. So think about one of those times when you just felt like this project is way too hard. I don't know what I'm doing. This is something for a professional, that kind of feeling. Because you're all training to be a professional. You'll get there soon. Um, so really think about how did you work through a past experience? And how might you handle a better experience in the future? And write a short paragraph detailing all of that.